Just two weeks after a thrilling season opener at Hockenheim, the Formula Regional European Championship by Alpine returned to action at Spa-Francorchamps, a circuit regarded as the University of Motorsport for the second of 10 rounds in the 2024 season. Among the 32 single-seaters that took to the track nestled in the Ardennes Forest was series leader Rafael Camara. The Prima Racing driver, during the inaugural round of the season, secured a pole position, a victory and a second place, firmly establishing himself as the driver to beat. The Ferrari Driver Academy's flag bearer did not disappoint in Belgium either, excelling from the start in Thursday's six-hour test session. Additionally, at the beginning of the weekend, French driver Romain Andriolo was awarded the first Resilience Award of the Year for his achievements at Hockenheim. This new trophy, created by Pirelli, rewards drivers who demonstrate exceptional resilience and improvement during races. Points are awarded based on the difference between starting grid position and the final finishing position, with the aim of rewarding those who gain the most places. At the end of the season, the driver with the highest score will receive the prestigious Pirelli wheel. Andriolo climbed 16 positions over the two races at the first round, gaining five positions in race one and 11 in race two, placing him at the top of the Pirelli standings. Um, first, I'm quite enjoy about the weekend of Hockenheim. I mean, my qualifying was not the best, but in the both race, we need the great recover to win a lot of place between the first one and the second one. So I'm quite enjoyed. Since we started the Formula Regional project, uh, we always have every season different rookies in our team. And for us to evaluate the progression since the first winter testing to how they finish the season is, uh, is uh, the best. In traditional fashion, we would begin the weekend with a spectacular and intense qualifying session, which would see Roman Belinsky, top group B, celebrating his first pole position in the series. The Trident driver posted the best time of the morning after a red flag when James Wharton went off at Radion, bringing an early end to his session. Returning to the track on slick tyres, the Anglo-Polish driver, with the track gradually drying, clocked the best time of a 2 minute 22.533. Enzo Perjo was also turning heads with his performances in Group A, going fastest in the session. A hugely notable performance for the young rookie from the Santalok Racing Team, securing him the front row for Saturday's race in just his second race weekend. Noah Stromstead secured third place on the grid, shining in Group B, with strong pace that saw him battling at the top of the timesheets for much of the session. As the lights turn green and the formation lap will get underway, and Roman Belinsky will take them through in towards Turn 1 at La Source. A big moment for him. Great opportunity for the drivers as well to warm up the tyres and get prepared, ready for the race start. But um, we're currently at a standstill, at least for now. The green flag is being waved in the distance. No activity from the lights as things stand. I think they're just waiting for the clearance now. The pace car in the background, they're still trying to move Giovanni Maschio's car. And they have got it as far as to the road on the left hand side the start has been officially delayed so that is the latest news that has been brought through to us as well folks delayed start here due to Giovanni Maschio's car uh, being stagnant up on the Kemmel straight so you can see they have got uh, a crew attending to the situation we'll await the green flag to be waved the marshal doing so right now and here come the lights third light fourth light and the fifth light and it's pedal to the metal. And it is go, 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 go. Great start from Roman Belinsky. And also Enzo Peugeot getting away well as well. We saw his car pointed to the inside. He still retains second place, but challenging Belinsky out of turn one. But it's Roman who leads the way. He's roaming onwards up through towards turns one and turns one towards turns two. 
and turns three alike as well. Noah Stromstead in third place. Further back, Alessandro GST as well. But a run here from Enzo Peugeot could be oh so vital to potentially take the race lead away from Roman Belinsky. They now climb up the hill through towards Kemmel. In comes now Enzo Peugeot on the attack. Oh, look at Noah Stromstead getting so tight to the outside as they head up towards Lacom. Daring! A fantastic display from Enzo Peugeot. He takes the lead, but several cars dodge on track. Belinsky now back through. Oh, what's happened to the 74? That is Enzo Peugeot who's gone off into the gravel and has lost places as a consequence. They're all trying to sort themselves out left, right and centre, but it's Roman Belinsky who retakes that lead of the race that he very nearly lost altogether. Bravery coming through the first sector. Well, that was man. This was it, folks. An incredible start to this race and as a consequence I think Zachary David has moved up into second as well and Rafael Kamara on the climb up to fourth as then we see them come through Poo on some wheel to wheel action further up as well with MP Motorsports getting into the mix as well with the Santalock teams as well that's Matteo De Pardo who is under pressure but uh, has managed to keep the MP Motorsport car at bay that was Nikhil Bora, who was actually fighting for an improved position, coming through now in towards Campus and Stavolo. In behind alike as well. I tell you what, a furious start here. Brando Bador right in the mix of this. That's Hugo Ugachukwu, who has actually gone off wide, coming out, heading through that middle sector, and uh, very nearly losing it altogether, and unfortunately has lost a place. I think the RPM just managing to get out in front of him here. And that's uh, certainly going to hurt. I think that's, um, in fact, looking further down, Edgar Pierre on the run right now and is actually challenging the cars for the up. In fact, that is Noah Stromstead and Rafael Kamara. Kamara getting the jump there on Noah Stromstead and moves up into third place. So a great run from him, but Stromstead has the Tiger line heading through turn one. Kamara having to forfeit the place. There is more wheel to wheel as well further back. There's the Red Bull uh, livery there of Enzo Delini further back in the field. Ugo Gachuku also in a fight in his own right. Remember, he went off wide on that previous lap. But could make all the difference as they head down towards bus stop. And David now on the attack as they make their way through towards the bus stop. Chicane right at the front. Belinsky, I don't think, was quite prepared for it. As we now see a bunch of cars now fighting further down. The RPM's getting tied up as well further back. And David has got the lead. Zachary David did take it. You can just see the late send coming in towards bus stop. And Roman Belinsky had to avoid it wheel to wheel as well between Alessandro Giusti further back in the ART. And he's coming together with Enzo Peugeot as they now rise up through towards Eau Rouge and Radion. Fair play to Enzo. Peugeot has actually recovered immensely after the off that he had at the very start of the race, but he's going to come under some excruciating pressure, as is Enzo Delini, who now climbs up the hill as well. He's got another ART all over his rear right now. Yaroslav Vasalaho also in the mix of all this. Belinsky back in front. Zachary David into second. Noah Stromstead and Rafael Kamara running wheel to wheel through towards Lacom. Kamara crawling all over the back of the RPM as they burst through Malmedy, Max Merrick from Noah Stromstead. Great defensive driving and has managed to withhold that P3 place, keeping Kamara at bay. But Red 5 is on the attack and looking on the outside, coming through Rivage, bidding to become twice a race winner at Spa in the Formula Regional European Championship by LP. For the back as well, Enzo Peugeot and Alessandro Giusti going wheel to wheel. Belinsky going full defensive here. Zachary David now under pressure is now. Uh, Noah Stromstead tries to take that second place, can't quite do it at this point in the race. We now drift up towards the front, Noah Stromstead once again defending. He's managed to take P2 away from Zachary David. Contact between Rafael Kamara and David over that battle for P3. David losing out to Noah Stromstead who is now moving up in hot pursuit of a race win here. It's, uh, incredible moments here as we now see them climb the hill leading up through towards Lacom, Belinsky still out in front, unperturbed, but a late move here as well as we now see the battle once again unfurl. Oh, going wide! Goodness me! That was Alessandro Giusti running wide there, Matteo De Paolo. But the battle at the, at the front, look at Noah Stromstead, he's taken the lead away from Roman Belinsky, so a huge moment up at the front end. Belinsky losing the lead advantage, and the Dane, Noah Stromstead out in front for RPM. What a drive from this young Danish driver. Absolutely sensational performance so far from him. 
helping Kramer for greater success as he has done so in the past. He did it back in Hockenheim in race one and he would love to add yet another, at least another P2 performance on the table as well. Heading down into towards bus stop, Kamara opens the door, takes P2 away from Roman Belinsky who is there reduced into third. Just set a warning shot down the inside as well. We've got some more side-by-sides for the back. Santalok and Van Amersfoort coming together. Brando Bador. And it looks to be Matteo De Palo coming together, heading through towards the Lady Com into Malmedy section. And there they are again. De Paolo around the outside. And yes, Bador foregoing that P7 place. Oh, goodness me! And that is Brando Bador who's just gone off into the gravel trap. And that has lost him so much time. And look at this, it's Edgar Pierre. Edgar Pierre in the gravel. RHGP have took a tap at it. Who now sees three cars in behind, including Ugo Ugochukwu, who's in this fight, as well as Nicola Lacorte. But we have a battle now for the lead this time. Noah Stromstead and Rafael Kamara. I tell you what, they're banging wheels up towards Lacom. But Rafael Kamara, in what is, can only be described as sensational performance here at Spa so far. He started sixth on the grid. He grinded. It's now yellow flags in the second sector as well. pulling off some big moves he's gone really close to the back of Kamara this time will he try a challenge for the lead here now once again they're going to go wheel to wheel heading through it towards the bus stop no way surely not Noah Stromstead trying to break down the Brazilian Rafa Kamara fending him off it's a drag race to the line between the two but Kamara wins here at Spa Francochamp Noah Stromstead a fantastic second place a huge fight as well for third with Roman Belinsky coming out towards the line he does take in a thrilling race one at Spa Francorchamps, Rafa Kamara secured his second victory of the season after a remarkable climb from sixth place. Noah Stromstead initially finished second but was penalised for gaining an off track advantage, dropping to fourth, which promoted Roman Belinsky to second and Zach David to third. Enzo Pergeau and Alessandro Giusti also faced penalties for similar infractions affecting their final positions. As a result, Matteo De Paolo finished fifth, followed by Pergeau in sixth and Giusti in seventh. Oh yeah, what a race. Uh, I mean, started from P6, especially this category is not easy to pass. Uh, and we managed that. I mean, in the beginning it was quite tough as I almost crashed so many times, I can't count anymore. <laughs> so, yeah, it was very, very fun race. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I mean, it was a long time that I don't do a race like this. Oh, and so, so grateful like to, to do that. And when you have so much confidence when you're doing, uh, it's so nice to enjoy a lot, especially doing what you love to do. Uh, and yeah, especially we, we, we still Keeping doing what is our target to keep doing points uh, for the championship. Where you need to be very consistent in this category. And yeah, I mean, I'm just very, very happy. Also, I want to say a big thanks for my team. Prema did an amazing job. Uh, unfortunately, in qualifying we couldn't put together, but we always had the speed, and we know we knew that we could, we could win, and then we did it. In the second qualifying session, Kamara secured his fifth pole position and second of 2024. Fresh from his victory in the first Belgian race, further extending his championship lead, he set the fastest time of a 2 minute 14.254. The Ferrari Driver Academy member took pole from his teammate Wharton who topped Group B. The Australian driver recovered from a crash at Radion on Saturday that had kept him out of the first race. Behind the all Prima front row was Tuka Taponen, just under seven tenths behind Kamara. McLaren driver development's Ugo Ugachukwu secured the fourth spot on the grid, three tenths behind Wharton in Group B. Shiusti continued his strong form, securing the third row alongside Noah Stromstead. Red Bull junior Enzo Deligny and Belinsky formed the fourth row, absent was Mercedes junior Dolly and Pan due to a severe flu. Filtering in at the back, all eyes on the green flag as the marshal waves it. 
And here come the lights. Third light, fourth light, and the fifth light. And it's pedal to the metal. And it is go, 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 go. Great response there from Rafael Kamara. Not a great response for Enzo Delini further back, who loses a place to the Van Amersfoort in behind. Tucker Tappanen jumping off and remains in third as well. But Bremer maintaining their spots at the front of the order. Further back, Alessandro Giusti also getting a great start. He's up to fourth with Ugo Gachuku not getting, I would say, the best of launches. In fact, I'd say he filtered backwards as they now climb up through Eau Rouge and Radion and MP motorsport car just dodging off at the back there is Uga Chukwu further back in the order there you can just see him at the rear of the field not sure what happened to him but as we're now watching them climb the hill leading up through towards Lake Com Kamara out in front here comes Tucker Tappanen in car number eight for the RHGP team if you want to win as I said before hire a Finn and he's going to go for the race lead coming through Malmeni Tucker Tappanen taps on Kamara for the race lead coming through Malmeni down towards Rivage and the RHGP car now in in front with one of its uh, what looks to be a Sanslot car that ventured into the gravel they're going in tandem through towards the Rivage section but an incredible start certainly on behalf of Tucker Tappanen a massive launch and now we see the Tridents making their way through the gravel really bizarre scenes at the start but a very very good getaway for the front end on Canato Lay as they now climb the hill once again on the next lap. Tappanen still out in front. Kamara still trying to close it. There's Ugo Ugochukwu further back. Kamara, who has already witnessed his lead, be ripped away from him. Tucker Tappanen is going to try and force him to the outside as they swap all across the homes, all across the straight, leading up through Kemmel and Kamara right in the curves and trying, uh, well, trying with all his might, trying to see Tucker Tappanen and he's trying to hang it on around the outside with Tappanen. Fair, respectful racing between the pair of them as they head down through towards Ravage, but Tappanen managing to be the better. And Noah Stromstead looking to right the wrong from before. Oh, car number 15. That's a Van Amersfoort car that has just taken a trip off the track. Brando Vador licking up the gravel and has unfortunately unsettled his balance right now. Was fighting it out with Enzo Delini as they come down in towards the bus stop chicane. As we now see him make his way through now, and once again trying to challenge the 74 Santalock as they head through a squeal of the tyres. And once again, Clero forced to cut to the inside, pushing out the Santalock 74. Belonging to Enzo Persia once again, part of the rookie contingent this season. Once again, they run wheel to wheel, coming through the initial Lasor section to Santalox, trying to squeeze and box in Pedro Clero at this point. All over him in behind. We've also got some movements for the back. Once again, Stromstead on the cusp, but perhaps moving himself up into a podium place. They make contact, heading up through towards Lacom. Wharton now the switch back in the hands of Stromstead. Will he go for it? Heading through Malmedy. Wharton forced out deep as now once again push a little bug drop perhaps here from Noah Stromstead as they come together, coming down towards Ravage. This is inviting Alessandro Giusti into this fight as well, and he's bringing along fellow F4, French F4 champion. Gilles Terre into this fight too, so it's all starting to build up in this battle for P3 and Stromstead, who was very nearly... Now Kamara has got the lead back away from Tappen, and so there we have it, that must have happened in the initial stages of the Camel straight to Belinsky onto the grass. Roman Belinsky, he's coming back onto the track. Great evasive action there for the 44, and Belinsky does well to dodge out the way. Surely now the cars have got to filter through and try and dodge the stricken Trident. But I'm not sure quite what happened in that instance, but luckily enough, all the cars making it through. And very, I must say, fantastic instincts from Roman Belinsky. I've got to applaud him for that. He could be on the table for them here. They had a good point saw last time out. As now Noah Stromstead goes around the outside here of James Wharton for third place in the RPM car. Back into podium contention. Lost out on it yesterday. He's going to try and take it back today. And the safety car has been deployed. The safety car has been deployed and the incident involving Roman Belinsky and Ivan Dominguez, I can confirm, is under investigation at race control uh, through sector, well, through turns three and four. I'm also looking on my screen. Roman Belinsky's car is moving. Oh, big crash. That is, goodness me, that very nearly going sideways. That's the 29. The bus stop chicane once again, and they'll put pedal to the metal 
for the second time in this race now. Rafael Kamara leading them down through towards turn one, took a tap and then in second place, they still withhold their positions right now. Alessandro Giusti having a little look at the inside of James Wharton with Evan Gilter still remaining in six as well. The two ARTs and holding on to a double points finish if they can achieve this. But they got wheel-to-wheel -wheel action for the back. Great chance here for Enzo Perjo to get past Niall Wharton trying to defend as well as now Kamara out in front. Stromstead has taken P2, took a tap and now we've got some side-by-side. -side. Once again, Delini running wheel-to-wheel -wheel this time around with Enzo Perjo trying to take it on. It's the battle of, of the two Enzos as they head down in towards the next right-hander through Campus and Stavolo. The Red Bull trying to give itself wings, trying to hold on to the place. And now Enzo Perjo has lost out to his teammate who goes on through. That is Depalo who has now moved on up. Uh, or should I, should I say, Teofiel Nile from Matteo Depalo at this restart as they head down now in towards bus stop Delini under pressure again look at this the two Santa Locks together trying to break past the Red Bull one of them cutting the course coming out of the bus stop chicane heading through towards turn one as we now see them now head through towards the source this time Zachary David as well under pressure Riddicella coming into this as well a massive battle across the board as we now see a lot of battling further back with James Wharton now on the tail of number eight, very own Tucker Tappanen, who has now lost out. And James Wharton moves up to third place towards turn one. There is indeed the Iron Dames car in between two cars. That is the 66 Trident of Ruiki Lu as well. Down the inside from Nico Lacorte, who manages to take the place. Fantastic effort on part of him. And he now looks to proceed onwards and upwards. He's got past Ruiki Lu. Ruiki Lu now trying to take down Marta Garcia, who has also had her own stellar single-seater career. Up to a Rouge and Rally on the tenacity of Marta Garcia to defend the place against Ruiki Lu. Running wide as well uh, is an MP motorsport car. I think that's the number 20 seven of Edgar Pierre who is also trying to work on up to found it can't be Edgar Pierre because of course he's driving the RPM here this weekend but I think he is involved in this fight nonetheless you can just see him in the background in the background now again we see the RS GP of Tucker Tappan and losing out to Alessandro Giusti heading into LACOM and the 2022 French F4 champion now moves up into fourth place Tappan and reduced to fifth Rafael Kamara with the fastest lap of the race as well, a 2.16.791. He's going to enter the bus of chicane. Stromstead is not going to challenge him this time. Certainly not for the race win, but coming out of turn 19, it's two for the price of one weekend. Here at Spa for Rafael Kamara. He's taken pole, two race wins, the first driver to do it in this championship. And not to mention, that's three wins out of four races through the course of this season and a blanket podium record. In race two, Rafa Kamara continued his dominance with a third win of the season, solidifying his lead in the championship. Ivan Dominguez finished eighth, but was penalized post-race for causing a collision, which affected the top 10 standings. Enzo Deligny and Enzo Peugeot finished eighth and ninth respectively, ahead of Brando Badua. Oh yeah, very happy. Uh, even for the championship, it was very good. Uh, yeah, what an amazing weekend. Uh, I think it was a perfect weekend. Nokia was almost here, it was a perfect weekend. And also, it's a very special track for me, where I like a lot to drive. I enjoy so much here. And every time I come here, uh, I just, even if it's not win, if I'm not winning, I still enjoy it a lot. So it's a very graceful track. Uh, well, it was a good race today. We started P6, gaining a few positions in the start, and uh, in general the pace was quite good. Only missing a bit to uh, Kamara in the start of the safety car restart, but in general uh, a good race. I think I had a really good start, uh, redeemed myself from Hockenheim, uh, so I'm happy with that, uh, happy I made steps there. Uh, then I obviously saved a couple, pushed a pass to get past two car after safety car, so that was quite good for me, but yeah, I'm just happy to finish on the podium and score some points for this weekend and can move to the next race. The next round will be at the prestigious Zandvoort circuit on the weekend of the 8th and 9th of June, a track known for hosting one of the most fascinating Formula One Grand Prix. We'll see you there.